We have already mentioned Homo floresiensis as a tiny human with a tiny brain but somehow survived maybe even as late as uh, 18,000 years ago or maybe 12,000 years ago. So this particular section of the Scientific American uh, on Becoming Human uh, focuses on that briefly. Uh, a spectacular find in Indonesia reveals that a strikingly different hominid shared the earth with our kind in the not so distant past. So this is a small but clever Homo floresiensis hunting pygmy stagodon which is stagodon which is a uh, elephant relative and giant rat that roamed uh, the Floresian rainforest 18,000 years ago. Um, funny thing is on the island of Flore Flores in Indonesia villagers have long told tales of a diminutive upright walking creature with a lopsided gait, a voracious appetite and soft murmuring speech. How on earth would such a, a memory survive? So is it possible that uh, these Floresiensis were around uh, even as uh, uh, late as uh, the beginning of the Holocene and the uh, tales have continued because it's not just in Flores, it's also in uh, other uh, islands uh, that such a tale has been told and with specific names for this particular uh, human-like creature that they uh, explain or talk about. Um, so here is an overview of the many humans. Conventional wisdom holds that Homo sapiens has been the sole human species on the earth for the past 25,000 years. We already said Neanderthals disappeared before that. Remains discovered on the Indonesian island of Flores have upended that view, which is really striking. The bones are said to belong to a dwarf species of Homo that lived as recently as 12,000 years ago. Amazing. Although the hominid is as, small, uh, is as small in body and brain as the earliest humans, it appears to have made sophisticated stone tools, raising questions about the relation between brain size and intelligence. We talked this now already in various ways in Chapter 3. To f the find is uh, controversial, however, some experts wonder whether the discoverers have correctly diagnosed the bones and whether anatomically modern humans might have made those advanced artifacts. So you have skeletal evidences and then you have tools and you're trying to map uh, that they uh, were as smart as uh, modern humans despite being small in body size and brain size. So the relatively speaking, this is the modern Indian elephant which is actually smaller than the African elephant, for example, order eight feet here, uh, and modern Homo sapiens stand uh, over five feet. Uh, so dwarfs and giants tend to evolve on islands, isolation, with animals larger than uh, rabbits shrinking and animals smaller than rabbits growing. The shifts appear to be adaptive responses to the limited food, suppl food supplies available in such environments. Remember early on we talked about adaptation and adaptability, so uh, this is obviously a genetic adaptation because it's passed on uh, through generations uh, of Floresiensis and of course also uh, other species and sapiens. Um, and Neanderthals as well in terms of their uh, characteristics. Um, Stegodon, an extinct proboscidean, uh, animals with this kind of a trunk, colonized Flores several times, dwindling from elephant to water buffalo proportions. Some rats, uh, so this is a pygmy st uh, Stegodon here, and this is the Indian elephant. Uh, some rats, in contrast, became rabbit-sized over time. Homo floresiensis appears to have followed the island rule as well. It is thought to be a dwarfed descendant of Homo erectus, which itself was nearly half the size of a modern human being.
so this is a common rat, modern rat, and this is the Flores giant rat. So the island rule may have worked and may have allowed a species to survive, but the question is how intelligent were they and how did they survive even as uh, modern humans uh, invaded and Homo erectus uh, was already there. So low and broad brain case of the Homo floresiensis LB1 compared with Homo erectus prominent uh, brow arches over each orbit, uh, low and broad brain case, slightly different here, narrow nose, uh, both of them, uh, teeth small relative to Australopithecine teeth, um, and if you look at Homo floresiensis and Homo sapiens, obviously skull size is small, brain size is small as well, body size is small overall. Shared features between LB1 and members of our own genus led to the classification of the Flores hominids as Homo, despite its tiny brain size. Noting that the specimen most closely resembles Homo erectus, the researchers posit that it is a new species, Homo floresiensis, that dwarfed from a Homo erectus ancestor. Homo floresiensis differs from Homo sapiens in having, among other characteristics, no chin, uh, a relatively projecting face, and a prominent brow and low brain and a low brown brain case. So obviously we are uh, making morphological connections with a species and then trying to find the mysterious connection to the tools. This is an all blade and point. So advanced implement uh, implements appear to have been the handiwork of Homo floresiensis. Interpretation is uh, debated. Earlier hominids with brains similar in size to that of Homo floresiensis uh, made only simple flake tools at most, but in the same stratigraphic levels as the hominid remains at Liang Bois, researchers found a suite of sophisticated artifacts, including all blades and points, um, exhibiting a level of complexity previously thought to be the sole purview of Homo sapiens. So it raises questions about uh, expertise, cognitive abilities, brain size, and so on that we have uh, talked about. So looking again at the, uh, the home of the Hobbit in the context of uh, other information we have looked at before, uh, South Africa, uh, Central Eastern Africa, Western uh, Africa, and so on, going millions of years with uh, more recent times over here in uh, Europe and we already extended uh, Dominici Georgia to 1.75 million years ago. Uh, so we have Homo floresiensis, uh, which we will see here, uh, okay, in Flores Island. Uh, early modern humans, late Neanderthals, uh, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Australopithecines, all kind of discovered all over the place. Scholars were stunned a decade ago to learn that Homo erectus might have survived on the island of Java in Indonesia until 25,000 years ago, well after the arrival of Homo sapiens in the region and even after the disappearance of Europe's Neanderthals. The recent revelations that a third hominid dubbed Homo floresiensis lived in the area just 12,000 years ago has proved even more provocative, of course. Archaeologists recovered the remains of, uh, from a large limestone cave known as Liang Bois, Bois, located in western Flores. No one knows exactly how humans first reached the island. They may have made the requisite sea crossing by boat, or they may have drifted on natural lefts, rafts quite by accident. Geographically, we have also, of course, talked about sea level changes over the uh, longer term. Geographically, uh, Javan H. Uh, erectus is a good candidate for ancestor of Homo floresiensis, but resemblances Javan, sorry, Javan, <laughs> Javan Homo erectus, but resemblances to specimens from Africa and the Republic of Georgia raise the question of whether Homo floresiensis stemmed from a different hominid migration into Southeast Asia from one that gave rise to Javan Homo erectus. Future excavations of Flores and other Indonesian islands may cast light on these mysteries. So you can see how fluid these stories tend to be. So here we are in China, in uh, Borneo, in Java and Flores, this tiny little island here which may have provided some uh, physical refugia or a climate refugia for a different species to survive and by 
the island rule become uh, a hobbit. So this is the Liang Bua cave and you can see now Flores uh, all kinds of evidences of sapiens and erectus around but there is Flores a tiny island uh, that uh, somehow provided home for these people. So that is uh, the timeline looking here. Oops, did I screw that up? Hope not. Okay. Um, the timing of their lives. Adding a twig to the family tree of humans, Peter Brown of the University of New England in Armidale, Australia and his colleagues diagnosed the hominid remains from Flores as a new species of Homo floresiensis, as we said already. This brings the number of hominid forms alive at the time of early Homo sapiens to four if Neanderthals are considered a species separate from our own as shown here. But we keep, we keep saying slightly contradictory things. Species in generally are supposed to be uh, only uh, fertile breeding populations and they would be sterile if they crossbred, like a mule that can be produced from a donkey and a horse, for example. Uh, but Neanderthals and sapiens uh, interbred. We carry the genes. So what do we mean by separate species? That's not always very well defined. Um, Brown believes that Homo floresiensis descended from Homo erectus. Other, uh, others hypothesize that it is an aberrant Homo sapiens or Homo erectus or an offshoot of their earlier and more primitive uh, habilines or Australopithecine. Habilines or Australopithecine. So here we have Sahelanthropus uh, Aripithecus uh, Aurorin uh, coming from 7 million uh, into uh, Ramidus, Australopithecus uh, anamensis and Kenyanthropus, uh, Australopithecus afarensis, and then we are beginning to have uh, Homo habilis uh, as Australopithecus overlap uh, with uh, our ans more uh, Homo lineages. And then uh, at present we have, so you can see the timings here in terms of thousands of years from 1.9 million years so basically over the Pleistocene uh, Floresiensis is down here and you have Sapiens, Neanderthalensis and Erectus uh, in the green that ran across here so you have four uh, pot potentially uh, living together, Floresiensis, Erectus, Sapiens, and Neanderthalensis. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there uh, in terms of the story of the littlest human. It is an interesting story, especially because there are verbal tales of a potential hobbit-like creature running around in Flores and other parts of uh, Indonesia, Indonesian seas. So this is obviously a story that will evolve over time as more evidences of uh, this species and its potential relation uh, to its ancestor uh, are uh, found. Okay, so definitely worth including here. We'll come back and look at another podcast a uh, little bit about what is called uh, 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 founder gene mutations. Uh, how uh, arrival of a founder and the mutation gets then transmitted through the so-called haplogroups that we talked about. So we'll do that in the next podcast, okay?